um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm Stephen. You can find me on Twitter as Stephen.js, even though I write primarily TypeScript now. Uh, so it's a little awkward. Um, I'm a team lead at Quantum. Uh, been in tech in some capacity for 15 years. Uh, those tables are a little bit close to home because for about nine years I did emails. Uh, for the last four years I've been leading teams in some or other capacity. Um, so, um, three things. Um, I want to explain a little bit with what I mean by safety. Um, I want to explain why it's important and what we can do to, uh, to help. Uh, to make your environment safe. So, uh, safety. Um, safety is a really big topic, but I'm only interested in like a small subsection, a subject, subsection of it, psychological safety. Um, it's not to say other types of safety aren't important. Um, I mean, I don't have to explain why you're not productive if your office is on fire, I think. <laughs> um, but psychological safety, so what does that mean? Um, so according to Dr. W. Pedia, um, that, thanks. Um, psychological safety means being able to show and employ oneself without fear of negative consequences of self-image, status, or career. Right? So, um, what is getting negative feedback in a bad way going to do to my self-image? Um, I already have a little bit of imposter syndrome to kick-ass presentation before it doesn't help. Okay. Um, status, I mean, not really super relevant right now, but I mean, you can also sort of imagine. And a bigger one, the rest of your career. Um, so why is this so important? Well, I mean, it, mustn't, it's, it can't be nice to hear that you make others feel unsafe. Um, you know, I'm being a good human, that's its own reward. Um, but, you know, we're all software engineers or software-related people, so let's make this... Uh, uh, very, very businessy. Lack of safety has real costs to your organization. Um, there's four that I'd like to highlight. Being reduced output. So um, Google, when they still were trying to not be evil, um, <laughs> they had like a lot of cash, and they had no, they had like a whole army of engineers, and they said, you know, they're not doing so great. They're doing great. We don't know why. Let's throw a bunch of cash at it. So they hired a bunch of academics. Um, and uh, after years of research, they said the strongest predictor of a team's effectiveness is psychological safety. Um, so another area where this might cost your organization is unmitigated risk. So when you're working on something, you try to bring all the risk up front so you, sort of at the, so you uh, can smoothly land your project. Um, and if your team members don't feel like they can ask questions, if they can, uh, you know, have difficult conversation, those risks are all going to pile up at the end of either a sprint, at the end of a project. Um, and, you know, if you're leading a team, that that's when uh, your your superiors are going to kick your ass. Um, there's also missed opportunity. Um, the best teammates that you know, that you want uh, in your organization. If they are getting signals that you know this is not a safe place to work, this is not a nice place to work, um, then they're not going to want to work with you, and you don't control all of these signals, right? Uh, we're all in Germany. We've all seen Glassdoor reviews. I don't know who's read, read their own ones and was like, yeah, but um, it's a thing. Um, also, a very simple one to sort of read, to tell your managers: employee turnover. If people join your company and they leave within six months, you're investing time in them, you know. You have to onboard them to your code base, your processes, your company culture, and you know if they don't see what they like, you haven't had a chance to sort of recoup that investment. So, um, there are a lot of signals that something is uh, wrong. Um, I'd like to sort of highlight two of them. Uh, low engagement. So. Um, if your team ritual, so I mean planning, retrospective, uh, if that gives you very little input, so no matter how busy your, your team is, how much you have to do, um, if you're not getting any input, you know, there's a good chance that something isn't quite right, that people are not getting input for a reason. Um, also related, uh, low participation in social events, um, and very one-sided attendance, a good red flag is uh, women tend to avoid drinks on Friday. 
we probably have a problem on Friday. <laughs> um, and uh, like I mentioned before, high turnover. So this can be both external, right? I mean, we're just bleeding employees. Uh, but it, also, it can also be internal, so depending on the company size. Um, if you have to gather people into a team and people are reluctant to work for you or for someone else, uh, you know, that's, that's a lot early and a lot more actionable than uh, someone that is already out the door. Um, if you are unsure about any of this and you are in a position to, to start figuring out how are we doing, um, a good moment is, uh, uh, two good examples are uh, if you do one-on-ones with your teammates, uh, there are things you can ask, you know, you're not going to ask, hey, do you feel safe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, but there are ways you can, you can talk about this without explicitly talking about it. Um, another really good one is exit interviews. Um, whose company does exit interviews in a structured way? Oh. So interesting thing about uh, exit interviews, the stakes are gone. So people will, uh, feel very free to spout whatever they were hanging on to for as long as uh, you hired them. Um, so one thing to be aware of, have a neutral party conduct these interviews. So that can be HR, uh, if you have agile coaches, they're usually good at this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So, million dollar question, <laughs> what can we do? Right? What can we do to make people feel safe? Um, broadly speaking, there are two things that you need to take care of. Right? You need to support people when they, when they give signals that they're not safe, um, and you need to build a safe environment. Um, I'll focus on support for, first, these, are, uh, they, these tend to be more urgent. Um, that being said, like I just said, I mean, no one, there's, there's a good chance someone isn't going to come to you and say, hey, I feel unsafe. You know, these signals are often more subtle than that. Um, so, for example, uh, I was uncomfortable. Uh, if you see a team member slowly withdraw from process, you know, grab them, uh, grab them aside and try to figure out what's going on. So, um, the um, behaviors I'm going to go over are not a complete list. Uh, this is supposed to be a lightning talk. So. Uh, <laughs> And like I said, there is a massive body of academic work uh, that I'll uh, be sure to share links to that you can use. Uh, some of it also very practical. Um, so, supporting people when they feel unsafe. <laughs> um, so if someone indicates to you that they feel unsafe, uh, you know, think about the process that someone has gone through to, before they came to you with this problem, right? Uh, it's important to, to acknowledge that, you know, thank them, and for fuck's sake, leave them, right? If you go through all this, you're not, you're not doing this to get someone out of the company. So, uh, listen and acknowledge their feelings. Sounds, for some people, maybe very obvious, for others, not so much. Uh, I actually went through com communications training today, and you would be surprised how many people just want to start talking, offering solutions. Um, don't speak to people's intent. If someone comes to you with uh, uh, explaining uh, how they feel about something, uh, if you speak to, if you try to justify it by speaking about the other's intent, you're ignoring the impact it has on them. And impact is always more important than intent. Um, so uh, you're having a conversation with someone and. Um, Maybe instead of running to HR, uh, having an awkward conversation with another teammate, ask them, what would you like me to do? Right? Very often people just want to vent, uh, again, want to feel understood. Um, and um, actions can have real consequences, right? If you remove someone from a situation, uh, that, can, that can lead to gossiping, can lead to a sort of career impact later on in someone's career. And um, so I interviewed a lot of people, and if you, if someone brings something to you, you need to follow up on this, right? Um, what came up very often is complaints brought to HR that just are not followed up on, and this turns into sort of a sink. Problems go here, and they go nowhere. So if you're the first contact point, it's not up to HR to to follow up on this. It's up to you to follow up on this. Um, if you don't, this is. It's a breach of trust. Someone trusts you enough to, to bring this to you, so you should be respectful of that. 
So, building a safe environment. Um, again, there's so much more to it than this. Um, the stuff I'm going to focus on is the things that came up repeatedly when talking to people about this topic. Um, so owning your mistakes has sort of two sides, um, not placing blame, which I'll get to in a little bit, but also setting an example, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. Um, if you fail at something, that's not necessarily a loss for your company, it's a learning moment. And it doesn't have to be just a learning moment for you, something you can put on your CV, like I blew up reacting production, you know. Uh, you can talk to your colleagues, this is what went wrong. Um, and that brings me to the other side of that. Uh, make sure people aren't punished for mistakes. Um, depending on your company size, this can be uh, being put on uh, irrelevant projects. Um, uh, who's heard of personal improvement plans, PIPs? It's not for improvement. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, there we are. Right, uh, ensuring that credit is given where, where it's due. Everybody has their own personality, not everybody likes uh, showing off or uh, promoting their, uh, their work. Uh, what's important is that uh, they can make sure that others do not diminish others' contributions. Right? You execute as a team uh, and everybody's involved, so you know, be sure to, uh, to bring everybody on board with the celebration. Um, so, a very common one, prevent interrupting. Um, you know, groups of people always have their dynamic. Uh, some people really uh, uh, quickly rip off of each other. That's fine. What becomes a problem is if people are interrupted before they've made the, before they've made a point that they were about to make. Um, if you're not sure how to deal with this, focus on the interruptee, not the interrupter, um, and say sorry. Uh, I think you weren't done talking yet. Is there something more you would like to say? Very simple. Um, <laughs> Jokes. Jokes don't always come across the way you intend them to. Um, I'm going to make a tiny sidestep to a story that one of the people I interviewed told me. Um, this is a uh, uh, someone who's uh, quite active in the community in London. Um, she was about to go to a women, uh, women who code or women in tech uh, lunch. And when she was about to leave the office, said someone, someone said, where's the lunch? In the kitchen? Ooh. Yikes. Um, so what do you do, right? Uh, you have to make a choice. Am I going to be confrontational? Um, if you don't want any of that, the very simplest thing to do is say, we don't make those kind of jokes here. right? Uh, you're not confronting them. You're just saying, this is not how things work here. Um, but call out bullying and ill-intentioned behavior, behavior early, early, publicly, and strongly. And this is super important. Um, if you don't take action, if you're late, uh, or if you're sort of wishy-washy about the consequences, what you're basically saying is when things really go bad, I'm not going to be there for you, at least not in time. <clears throat> um, Social events, I already talked about it a little bit, make them inclusive. Uh, drinking is fun for some, not for others. Um, so make sure there are uh, alternatives. Um, if your entire culture is boozy and you try to convince your colleagues that it's a bad thing, good luck. Um, you know, what you can do is provide maybe some alternative events, maybe focus it around going for food or an internal meetup, uh, keeping it sort of work oriented, <coughs> provide something else. Um, and this being queer JS, um, I, I, I feel like I have to uh, have a yeah. I feel like I should mention this. Um, encourage people to form informal private groups, but support them publicly. Um, so if you start an LGBTQ plus group at work, um, unless you identify as such, you know this is not the place for you to be. Uh, that being said. Um, uh, if someone uh, questions the right for that group to exist, uh, if someone says the, uh, the events or whatever they organize is discriminatory for whatever reason, you need to defend these groups' existence. Um, is that everything? Cool. So, um, 
Now, not everyone here is in a, in a leadership position, whether formal or informal, um, but most of the things I just mentioned don't require you to be, right? Um, so the most important thing I can tell you, and that's really for everybody, is start somewhere, anywhere, uh, make it small. If possible, do it publicly. Um, so maybe someone just needed one friend at a very, very critical time, or maybe you've started a change in the way uh, your company's culture works. That's it.